now. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Diane for her to take it away. So take it away, Diane. Thank you, Nabil. Welcome, everybody, to our last week of Get Healthy and Stay Balanced. Time sure has flown. Um, let's look at our first quote for the day. Nature itself is the best physician. So how true that is. And uh, we're going to expand on that this morning. So once again, I'm Diane Dumas. Pleasure to be here. The eight weeks have just flown by, but it's been such a great experience for me to share my knowledge in health and wellness with you. And hopefully I have been an inspiration to you to think about health in a, in a positive way and hopefully simplified things for you a little bit to make you realize that we can make very small changes that will have big effects on our health. And it just starts with one decision, one step at a time. So today we're gonna talk about home remedies. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to go back into history and back into the mid 1800s and talk about two people that were quite prominent in those days. One is the French biologist, Louis Pasteur, and the other one is Anton Bicham. So Louis Pasteur was the scientist credited with discovering how germs can make you sick. And an entire industry of pharmaceutical drugs, drugs emerged because of his germ ther um, theory. He believed in killing germs before they kill you. On the other hand, his rival, Anton Bacham, was the French scientist that proclaimed his germ theory was hogwash. Bacham discovered it's not the germ, but it's the body's environment that really makes you sick. He boldly claimed an unbalanced, too acidic body provides the right terrain for germs and diseases to grow. He discovered if your body is more alkaline, you can fight off any germ that tries to attack. So these two very diverse approaches caused a major uproar among the scientists. If you followed Pasteur, you attacked the germ. If you believed in Bacham's approach, you nurtured the body. To put an end to the feud, the medical establishment decided to endorse only one of these approaches. And I think we can all figure out which one they backed up. It was Pasteur's theory um, because it had a payoff. If germs can cause diseases, wow, then we can create patent drugs to kill these germs. More germs, more patent drugs. And Pasteur is be, has been become known as the father of pharmaceutical drugs. Bichamp's approach, on the other hand, ha, he said, keep your body healthy, keep it alkaline-based, eat more healthy foods, manage stress, exercise, but there's no financial significance or value in that. So it kind of died away. Now, just having read that to you, um, just want to disclaim something for a moment. I'm not saying that we don't need pharmaceutical drugs because great, great um, diseases have been treated with them. But what I am saying is that our focus is too much. We're relying too much on those things. And we're not really looking at our natural environment that we have in our, in our fruits and our vegetables, our plants that provide us healing and our wonderful herbs and the essential oils that come from plants. So all these things, we need to maybe just consider them a little bit more and integrate them into your diet, into your lifestyle, so that we can balance the body and not rely on synthetic drugs so much. Talking about an alkaline body, how do we achieve that? Well, I believe it was the last session I talked about the green, the green plants, the green vegetables. Those things create a lot of alkaline in your body. Eating foods that are not so many grains, they, call mo they cause more acidic, uh, um, the acidic environment in your body. So lots of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. These are plant-based diet is going to give you much more of an alkaline body. And today, we're going to actually look at 
some home remedies. Do you know that there's more than a thousand home remedies and most of them you have right now in your kitchen and your pantry? So it's, it's really amazing and we're going to explore some of them this morning. And I'm going to ask Nabil to put on our first, uh, second picture. So here's some things, and these are just a few, because I mentioned to you there's, there's over a thousand. Um, and I just pulled these out of my pantry. I didn't have to go shopping for them. They were right there. Um, the reindeer, though, I did shop for um, years ago at the dollar store. And also the little candle that's burning there. Um, that is a wonderful little thing that I found years ago. It was, wasn't, I think it was at um, like a grocery store, like um, the super center. And it came with a little tea light and I pour my essential oil on the top and I put a lavender in there because it's so calming and um, just leave it in my kitchen and it's simple and it just um, heats up the oil which releases into the air and it's, it provides a wonderful um, essential oil experience. So those two things I did, did um, purchase. Everything else I had already in my cupboard and I'm going to start with the far left. On the far left, I have, um, actually, I have a supplement, cranberry supplement, but beside that, I have the pure cranberry juice. There's many um, wonderful things about cranberries. Um, they're wonderful now at Christmas. You can put them in your stuffing, in your turkey stuffing. But cranberries really help us get rid of urinary tract infections, and they also help us prevent them. So if you feel that you're having one, what you want to do is really um, possibly maybe take the cranberry pills because they're much more, you get so much more of the cranberry in the supplements. But on a regular day-to-day -day basis, just maybe an ounce of cranberry juice. I, it's quite tart. We don't want the one from concentrate um, that's full of added sugars. We want the pure cranberry juice. And I dilute it with six ounces of water and I just sip on that. Uh, I put it in a nice wine glass, and that's my mocktail. And as I said, you can squirt some lemon and lime in it, or you can add something else to flavor it. You can use some bubbly water if you like. So that's just a good alternative for consistent prevention. Uh, cranberries themselves have an acid that prevents the bacteria from sticking to the lining of the urinary tract. So that acid in there it doesn't make your body acidic even though it's acidic to drink just like lemons they're acidic but when you take them into your body they create the opposite effect and that's very interesting so sometimes we think well that's acidic i don't want to have that cranberries will not create that but the acid from them does help the bacteria from sticking to the lining of the urinary tract and if you drink a lot of water with it, it helps to flush those toxins away. And I've, I've talked to the last weekend at a session, I think it was, we discovered three or four, the importance of water and how much water we really need to drink. So if you're only having a glass or two a day, I can guarantee you, you are dehydrated. And if you are thirsty, you are super dehydrated. So we don't want to get to that point. And we need to practice drinking water. We don't want to guzzle it. We just want to have a nice glass made with a straw, preferably, and just sip throughout the day to reach your water quota. The next item is beside it is my apple cider vinegar. And apple cider vinegar is, is wonderful. Vinegar uh, is a wonderful product. I like the raw, unprocessed um, vinegar because you keep all of the healthy bacteria and all the, the nutrients from it. So that's what's wonderful about the raw, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar. It's a great uh, stomach settler if you have indigestion because of lack of stomach acid perhaps. So if you're feeling that after you've eaten, you can just add a teaspoon to some water and drink it after a meal. I've also heard that taking a little bit of apple cider vinegar before a meal helps lower your glucose levels. So if you're eating something that's going to give you a spike, it um, will help level that out. 
So if you are taking any like metamor uh, metamorphin or anything like that for um, diabetes, you got to be careful if you take apple cider vinegar because it does lower your glucose level. But it's a great thing to have. It's a great tonic to drink before a meal. And, f and I got to get back to that. I used to do that religiously and then I kind of forgot about it for a while. So this has helped um, remind myself to add that into my daily regime. It's a great bacteria and fungus fighter. And if you have swimmer's ear, you can put equal parts of uh, apple cider vinegar and rubbing alcohol together. And what that does, and it works like a charm, I've even done it just with straight with rubbing alcohol. If we get water in our ear from swimming, I'll take a Q-tip, I'll dab it in the rubbing alcohol, and then I'll just put it over the ear hole and kind of um, squeeze the tip of the Q-tip so that I get a drop, or you could use a droplet and just put a, a drop or two in the ear and lay on your side for 20 minutes. The rubbing alcohol alone or with the apple cider vinegar will um, dry up the water from the ear and it really works like a charm. So we don't want to keep the water in the ear because that's where the moisture can then breed bacteria and cause an ear infection. So a natural remedy, you don't have to run out to the store and buy some, some specific product. You can just use what's in your pantry to dry out the water in your ear. Or if you shower it and you get water in your ear and it's not coming out within an hour or so, just lay on the side and drop, drop some of that in. It's a great odor eater. So vinegar is great to put in the rinse cycle in your washing machine. It helps remove smoke. So if you've been near a bonfire and you come back and your clothes are really smoky and you wash them and it doesn't come out enough, adding the vinegar to your rinse cycle will definitely take out those odors. It's great for diapers. I was thinking about Daniel. I know he's not with us today, but Nabil, you can tell him. It helps to freshen the diapers. It's such a great product and it's natural. So you're not adding chemicals to your wash to get rid of the odors. Um, although everyone now is using disposable diapers, funny story, when, when I had uh, my daughter and I had a baby shower and I told all my friends, I want cloth diapers, I want to do the all natural healthy way that was done years ago. And they all laughed and said, oh, you're not going to do that. And I tried, I did try, but the diapers never stayed on. They leaked, they fell, and then you put the plastic over, pant on top, and so now I have all these cloth diapers that we use for rags still, because <laughs> they're really good quality cloth, but they never really worked, at least not for me, but hey, I tried. Um, smelly socks, another great thing. Get rid of those odors. Put the vinegar in your rinse. Vinegar is great for stings like jellyfish and mosquitoes. Um, the substance in the vinegar neutralizes the pain-causing substances. So you dab it on the skin with a uh, cotton ball, and it really helps to um, neutralize that pain that you're feeling from those bites. A long time ago, people used to take vinegar and soak it a brown paper bag and then put it over your forehead to get rid of headaches. And um, I didn't know about that, but now people will do soak vinegar and put it in a cloth. So that's an interesting concept. You might want to try that. And, and there's no harm. If you try it and it doesn't work, well, you haven't wasted money. You haven't harmed your health. You might smell a bit vinegary, but hey, that's, that's, that's really not a big deal. Um, lavender oil is really great, or peppermint oil, actually, I use for headaches, the essential oil. Throat soother. So your throat's hurting, one tablespoon with warm water and gargle away. Great for your throat. Homemade cough syrup. Equal amounts of apple cider vinegar and honey. And you shake it, and there's your homemade cough syrup. Okay, all healthy. You don't have all these ingredients in it that you can't pronounce. You don't know what's in them. And then you read the boxes and you see all the possible side effects. Well, there's no side effects from any of these. Looking to the right of the apple cider vinegar, I have witch hazel. The active ingredient is tannin. It's a chemical compound with astringent properties. 
So what it does, it helps shrink blood vessels. It's great if you, if men, if you cut yourself from shaving, you can just take, or and any other minor wound, you can just take it, uh, put it on a cotton ball and dab the area that's been, um, you know, slightly cut or irritated, and it will really help shrink those blood vessels. If you have a poison ivy rash, perfect thing to put on that. And um, these are all things that you, well, if, if you go for a walk in the woods, you come home or you're at the cottage, make sure you have witch hazel in your pantry. It also helps to freshen and tighten your pores. And it helps with sunburn. So keep it in the fridge because then if you do have sunburn, you can take it out. It feels nice, it feels nice when you apply it um, from the fridge because it's nice and cold. And again, with a cotton swab, just or a, a cotton ball, dab the sunburned area to help relieve the sunburn. To the right of that, um, actually it's just sort of forward, I had the rubbing alcohol. And I touched, basic, base, I touched on it briefly. Uh, it's an antiseptic, cleaning agent, astringent, and a solvent. So do you know that you can clean ink stains with rubbing alcohol? You probably do. If not, there you go. No, no more worries about ink stains. It comes off lovely with rubbing alcohol. Cleans your jewelry, cleans chrome, and whiteboards, and your electronics. Great things to use, a great thing to use for all of those. Looking to, um, next is the aloe vera. I'm going to go. Now, I have the aloe vera in that little squirt bottle. I wanted to have a piece of the aloe vera plant, and I had this wonderful aloe vera plant that didn't make it when I moved to Oakville, and I'm very upset about it because it was my healing item in my homemade medicine cabinet. Whenever my daughter got sunburnt, um, I would just crack it open and apply the gel and directly on the skin, and it's amazing. Second best, I have the spray bottle aloe vera, and it's great for skin remedies. It's a gel gummy substance, and those are nature's natural soothing emollients. It's rich in anti-inflammatory compounds, and that's called bradykinin. Those are the anti-inflammatory compounds. And it's a chemical that also acts as a topical painkiller. That's why it's so great for sunburns. The magnesium lactate in the gel helps stop the itching and promotes healing. And it does that by dilating the blood vessels and therefore you increase the blood flow to the injured area. So that's a little bit how the aloe vera, aloe vera gel works and helps with psoriasis, acne, and even shingles. You can even try it with that. No harm done. Again, if it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work, but I, I bet you it will It'll work very well. To the right of that, I have my nice bag of Epsom salts. And Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. It is popular for stress-reducing, skin-softening, and aching-relieving soaks. It also helps your roses thrive. And raccoons hate it. So if you're having problems with raccoons, put out Epsom salts. You're not going to harm the environment or other plants, but you will deter the raccoons from wanting to make a second or uh, having a home in your home or in your backyard. Epsom salts help to draw out toxins from insect bites. They also pull, helps pull splinters to the surface. So if you have a bad splinter, you can soak in Epsom salts. That's going to really help you. You can add water to the Epsom salts to make a paste, and then you can apply it to the effective area for 10 minutes. So I would do that for an insect bite. That's going to really help. And then just for splinters, just soak in the Epsom salts with some warm water. A deep pore cleanse. A teaspoon um, with warm water, rub on the skin, and it helps to dislodge blackheads. So if you have teenagers at home and they have lots of blackheads, great natural um, substance to use to help them with their skin routine. And just a quick question. Yeah. Um, 
Will it also work on possums like it does on raccoon? I don't know, but you know what, Nabil, if you have po possums in your backyard um, or opossums, then, you know, definitely give it a go, right? Nothing to lose, just the cost of the Epsom salts themselves, right? Right. Yeah. And then uh, that was a question from Linda. And then Jiyun also is thanking you for the tips. Great. Yeah. You're welcome. It's fun. It's fun to learn like, wow, I didn't know we could do all these things with things I already have in my, my kitchen cupboard and pantry. Um, if you add it to your bath water, and it's such a great thing to do, even if you want to add your essential oils to the bath water, still put in the Epsom salts because it helps um, ease muscle pain. It also, if you have swelling from a sprain perhaps or bruises, this also really helps with that and hemorrhoids. So soak in an Epsom salt bath. It really helps to shrink the hemorrhoids. So it's such a great all around wonderful product. And I think we all probably have Epsom salts in our house. If not, you can find it at any drugstore. And they have them now that are flavored with, are scented with lavender and stuff. Um, you know, that's optional. So they've, um, like everything else, they always come out with the, you know, the zillion variety. So you have to stand forever and look and say, well, which one do I buy? We wish it was simple, right? <laughs> Just in front of us, but there's so many choices. Um, moving along. Let's take a peek at baking soda. And we probably be have we probably have been using this a whole lot already. Baking soda is known as a household cleaner. It's a leavening agent in baking. It also has though a history of healing remedies or a healing effect on the body. So again, it can stop the itching from insect bites. It can help remove dental plaque. If you put sprinkle it on your toothbrush, it tastes horrible, but it's still worth getting the white teeth. Um, it also can be used for bladder infections. You can mix a little half a teaspoon with water and drink that. You can add to foot baths. It nu neutralizes the bacterial acids that cause foot odor. So um, soak your feet. Put in baking soda. You don't need to buy all this fancy stuff. And then put a couple drops of nice essential oil in there as well. I'm getting more into essential oils, so I'm getting excited that I can kind of add those to a lot of, you know, bath soaks and foot soaks. Diaper rash, great thing with that. And easing, so there, you have to tell um, Daniel about that. Uh, definitely, you want to do a little soak with, um, if there's diaper rash on your baby, put some baking soda in the water, in their bath water. You're not going to harm the baby. There's no bad chemicals, and you're going to really help eliminate and um, the effect of the diaper rash. Easing a sore throat, half a teaspoon of baking soda to water, and you gargle. It also helps with mouth sores. So if you're experiencing those, give that a try. Swish it around with warm water in your mouth, and um, natural remedy. After baking soda, we're going to look at the big guns, garlic. And garlic is fabulous. So I'm actually going to read some things from uh, my, one of my health books about it. Garlic itself contains more than 100 chemically active compounds. So in garlic itself, more than 100 chemically active compounds. One of them is allium and it's present when the bulbs are crushed. So raw crushed garlic has such a strong antibiotic property, and we don't realize it. We, and I'm not saying don't take your antibiotics if the doctors told you, but I know if I get sick, I take that garlic, I open it up, I crush it, I even take it, and my kids will do it too, I put it right on um, a teaspoon, raw crushed garlic, and I might just put a little bit of yogurt on top so it goes down and it kind of covers, masks the taste and just get it into the body. Just get it in. It's such an amazing, maz amazing um, um, uh, aid for any kind, of, any kind of infection or viral infection, especially respiratory. There's been a lot of studies showing it's really helpful for respiratory um, infections. And heart health benefits to garlic. Um, the compound allium 
in the garlic and other compounds in it seem to work really well against tumors. They're discovering that. And raw garlic that not only we can ingest it, but you can crush it and apply it to wounds and it kills a whole variety of infection causing organisms. So uh, just a couple of things here that I wanted to take out uh, or read to you. Um, it says raw garlic that's crushed and applied to wounds kills a variety of infection causing organisms, including, including the fungus that causes athlete's foot vaginal yeast infections, and many cases of ear infections. It kills many different types of bacteria, including the one that causes tubercu tuberculosis and the dreaded E. coli, which is the cause of many urinary tract infections. It may even kill some germs that are resistant to standard antibiotics. Wow. So you can even take that along if you are on an antibiotic. Garlic destroys germs on the outside and the inside of your body. Eating it may help protect the lining of your stomach from um, H. pluri, the bug that causes most ulcers. And since garlic is, uh, garlic's essential oil is excreted through the lungs, it's particularly, particularly useful when you have a respiratory ailment which I mentioned. So the essential oil that's excreted, excreted through your lungs really helps the respiratory um, infections. So what a powerhouse garlic is. And I know that um, one preventative thing is to take two, loaves a, two cloves of uh, garlic a day into your diet. And if you can't have garlic because the taste or, you know, your husband or wife won't sleep with you anymore or in the same room with you anymore because of garlic, then take garlic pills. Um, you know, you're paying for, this, for the supplement, but um, maybe crush that garlic and put it in the soup, right? Put it in. Well, we're going to talk about bone broth today. So there's a, uh, a recipe where you can sneak more garlic into it. But the point is, especially this time of year, this time of year where we're indoors and it's dry, we're more susceptible to infections, let's get that wonderful um, garlic into our bodies and build strong immune systems. Tea tree oil. And there's a little bottle of it. It's got the blue and w uh, white label right center in the front. Acne, athlete's foot, canker sores, cold sores, cuts and scrapes, dandruff, head lice, insect stings, and nail fungus. It's a traditional medicine that was used for centuries. And how they get the oil is they crush the leaves of the tree, they extract the oil, and we use it, we can inhale it, we can um, put it directly on the skin, we can treat coughs and colds, and it's found in some um, wonderful products that we have now. One brand that uh, comes to my mind is Melaleuca, which is tea tree oil-based products. Natural hand sanitizers, insect repellents, natural deodorants. It's a great antiseptic for minor cuts and scrapes. And what you would do is just mix a little bit of it with coconut oil, perhaps, or another carrier oil, and then apply it to the cuts or scrapes because sometimes directly on it, it's very powerful, it's very strong. And um, same thing, it can help fight acne by doing the same application. So a wonderful thing to, you may not have that in your pantry, but definitely um, it's something worth adding to it. And then I have a banana right in front. Why do I have that? Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about if you know, if you're a little stressed over the holidays and you have some insomnia, you're having trouble sleeping, a banana is a great remedy to help you sleep at night before you go to bed and because it contains tryptophan. And tryptophan is an amino acid that's used to make serotonin. And that's a brain chemical that helps you sleep. So if you can't sleep, have a maybe half or a whole banana a great way to help relax you, or alternatively, you can use the wonderful lavender oil that I have burning in my um, 
photo there. And it's also known as a mild tranquil tranquilizer. So you can put it on your temples, your forehead before you sleep as well, or you can diffuse it like I, well, I'm actually, I'm just um, heating the oil up there. I'm not doing a steam uh, diffusing process, but it's creating the same effect. So once again, if you're going to put it on your skin, maybe add a little bit of a carrier oil to it because essential oils are quite powerful and strong. So, and then you can apply that to your forehead, your temples, and then you off you go and have a nice sleep. So I wanted to include that in my photo today. Then we're going to switch gears a little bit to the far right. We're going to talk a little bit about an ancient Ayurvedic practice that involves oil pulling. And maybe you are familiar with oil pulling or maybe you're not. Oil pulling is an ancient practice that involves swishing oil in your mouth um, to remove all the bad bacteria and create a healthy oral environment. It also helps moisturize your gums. It naturally induces inflammation and bacteria. We have 700 types of bacteria that can live in your mouth. And at any one time, up to half of them can be present. So you possibly have 350 bacteria in your mouth. This helps or contributes, I should say, to tooth decay, bad breath, and gum disease. In Ayurvedic practice, and I did a, a course on that, we learned about, and even in my health minister's course, we talked about oil pulling. So what we did is we took about a teaspoon of oil, and this one happens to be ses sesame oil, which is wonderful for oil pulling. Coconut oil is another oil that's used for oil pulling, and olive oil. So those are the three. We took the oil, about a teaspoon, and we put it in our mouth, and you swoosh it around. Ideally, it's for 20 minutes. So what we did in our training is we put it in our mouth, and we went for a walk. But we also took a little Dixie cup with us so that when it was time to uh, expel the oil, we didn't put it in the butt. We put it in the cup, and then we threw it out. You don't want to um, put it down the drain because it can clog your drains. So you want to definitely put it in the garbage. And that's hard to do. It's hard to keep it in your mouth for 20 minutes. And you don't want to swallow it because what it's doing is pulling all the bacteria out from your gums and your tongue. And it's collecting them. They're sticking to the oil. And you definitely don't want to be putting that back into your body. So 20 minutes was difficult to do. So start with five. And just... Um, your mouth will start to get watery. That's okay. And when you feel you have to spit it out, then spit it out. You'll build up. A lot of times it's just getting used to doing something new. So, you know, even a few minutes. And if you do it a few times a week, that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, Ayurvedic practice, they do it every day. That's just part of their morning routine. They put the oil in their mouth. They get dressed. They make the bed. They do whatever. 20 minutes goes by pretty quickly. They've done the oil pulling for the day. Hey, Diane, how yes. much, that's interesting, I've never heard of that. How much oil do you need, like, what's, like, is, is it a tablespoon, teaspoon? Yeah. Do you need to swish around? So, you know, do what's comfortable. You don't want it, your cheeks full of it and, you're, you know, you feel trapped. Um, so I would start with uh, a teaspoon. I think a teaspoon's a fair amount. Yeah, and you can swish it around a little bit. And then after, you can just kind of even hold it there. Let it just kind of sit and then swish it again. So um, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do, and it's on my New Year's resolution because I want to get back into the practice of doing oil pulling because I know the benefits of it. Um, there's, there's been lots of um, studies on it and um, very, very healthy to do that. So I wanted to um, definitely share with you today that. And um, since we're talking about that, if you could go to the last slide, Nabil, we'll look at that now. And there's a, there it is. There is a picture of my tongue scraper. This is something I do do every day. And if I don't do it, I, it's, it feels like you didn't brush your teeth. So tongue scraping is another Ayurvedic practice. And, you know, our tongue and our oral cavities are gateways between your mind and your body system. 
So it's really a, it really has an effect on your overall health. Your oral health is really created um, is also very related to your heart health. According to Ayurvedic practicing, scraping the tongue is a direct way of removing toxicity from your body. The coating on your tongue um, has the substance on it comes sometimes from improper eating, poor digestion. Um, it can be a reflection of imbalance in your gastrointestinal system. So the coating on your tongue, and we all have it, what you want to do is you want to remove that. When you sleep, you're not swallowing. So all of that is coming onto your tongue and it's gathering there and it needs to be cleansed. So brushing your teeth is brushing your teeth and your gums, but your tongue is sitting there, coat it. Don't use your toothbrush to brush your tongue because while you're doing is you're putting all that bacteria onto your toothbrush and you're probably not cleaning your toothbrush with hydrogen peroxide. You're probably just rinsing it under tap water. So you're breeding all of that bacteria. You want to use a tongue scraper. And a tongue scraper is just like showing there. And you take the two ends and you just put it over your, take, stick out your tongue and you just slide it down gently. And you'll see on the metal rim, you'll have all the kind of white coating from your tongue gathered there. Rinse it off and you're done. You can actually do like three if you want. If depends how wide your tongue is, I guess. I usually do maybe two. And then I remove all of the bacteria from my tongue and you really feel cleansed. Once you start doing this, you trust me, you'll you'll be part of your regime that you'll s you'll be hard to go without doing. And I have a nice little pouch that it came in, so it's great for traveling. And Santa's not here yet, so time to get it in your Christmas stocking. And a great gift. It's a gift of health. It's a little device, it's a little thing, but it really makes a difference. So, um, Hopefully you learned something new from all those wonderful home remedies. It's really exciting to share them with you. And I want to segue now into uh, picture number three is bone broth. There's my bone broth. Well, I'm not going to take the credit for it because my husband is so good at being the collector of bones every time we cook a chicken. He's the first one to take the bones and put them in the pot and we start making our bone broth. Bone broth is a mineral rich infusion made by boiling bones of healthy animals with vegetable herbs and spices. And every five star restaurant has a batch of bone broth in their kitchen. They're always um, cooking on the stove. They're always simmering and they simmer for usually for about 24 hours. It's a powerful health tonic. It boosts your immune system. It's high in calcium, magnesium, phosphorus content, which makes it great for your own bone health. It supports your joints, your hair, your skin, your nails because of its high collagen content. So what you do is you want to save your bones from your leftover chicken, turkey, or your goose, or even other animals, and you want to um, collect them. So this bone broth has been simmering for 24 hours and then we take it out and we want to chill it. So we, we just put it outside, we put a lid on it and we put it outside on our deck and um, or in the garage if you're afraid of animals coming in and, and disturbing it and drinking it. <laughs> uh, so you want to chill it and if you can have a big enough fridge to put it in, that's fine, or a second fridge. And then what you'll see is that the gel-like substance will form on top. And then what I started to do, and that's where you see it, I started to take a spoon and carefully remove that fat that has soaked to that jelly fat. And I'm going to remove that, and then underneath I have my wonderful bone broth. So let's go to the next or picture number four, which is the recipe ingredient. And here you'll see that you have about two pounds of bones from a chicken and then they had chicken feet I haven't done it was I tried at one time to find chicken feet and 
it was difficult. Um, maybe if you're near a farm, but there's a lot of really, really great minerals from chicken feet. You want to put a gallon of water, and this is a really important ingredient, and this is why I've decided to share bone broth today, because I'm sure a lot of you are already making it or have made it. It's not something that's new, but have you really used the two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar? Because that is what pulls the minerals out from the bones, and that's a definite must to add that to it. Then you have your onions, your carrots, celery, and your salt is optional. You can always add that later. Peppercorns and any herbs or spices that you might like. Hey, three, two cloves of garlic, put it in, put four in. Um, super, super important. And then um, you can put some parsley in there as well. Let's look at the next slide that has the instructions. You want to preheat um, your... Um, oven to 350. You place all the food into the um, food process. Um, sorry, I'm just having trouble reading it here. I'm going to maybe read it from my phone, which is easier, or I'll just come up. Place them. Um, nope, this is the wrong. This is the wrong one. Ha! Ah, if that's there we go. We're already joking. I, I sent you the wrong. I think I sent you the wrong instructions here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm giving you a cookie. I'm going, yeah, so it's like, this isn't quite right on there. So um, with the bones, so what you want to basically do is you want to just take your bones and you want to uh, bring them to a boil and then you want to simmer it. And you want to simmer it for um, about 12 hours or 24 hours. What we do at home is we put the bones on, we fill it with cold water, we put in the apple cider vinegar and we just have the bones and the water and the apple cider vinegar, and we leave that on for 12 hours or 24 hours. Now, we don't leave the stove on overnight. We turn it off at night, and then the next morning, we turn it back on again. We bring it up where it starts to kind of boil, and then we turn it right down to a simmer because it takes a while to get all that water heated up. So once it's heated up, you want to simmer it, and that's what you want to do for 12 or 24 hours. So we'll do that for maybe two days or maybe even the third day. It depends how long it was on at, at home. So if you're only putting it on for um, six hours in the day, then you might want to do it over three days. And then once you've done that, we, as I mentioned, we take it outside, we chill it, and then once it's formed, the fat has risen to the top, that gel-like system, we'll take it and we'll scrape it off. And then I now have my, uh, my bone broth. I will sometimes at that point um, either take, strain out the bones from there and you have their pure broth, or I will sometimes add my mirepoix, which is your carrots, your onion, your celery, and then I'll add at that point, and then I will, again, bring it to a boil and let those vegetables cook into it and then strain all of that. So my mirepoix, my celery, onions, and carrots, I'm extracting the nutrients from it, and I'm boiling it in. I'm not going to eat those ones. I'm going to strain it out. And then I have a pure bone broth. And with that pure bone broth, I can then make something as simple as soup. So what I did the other day, we had the bone broth, it was ready, and I took um, a few cups of it in a pot, it's just a pure bone broth, and I threw in some carrots, and I threw in some black organic soybeans, and I threw some kale, and I threw in some peas, and I threw in some konjac noodles from the konjac root plant, and no carbs in that. And I had a, a soup. I could have thrown in some chicken chunks. I had some frozen chicken in the freezer, but I decided to do, to do a more of a um, non-meat soup, even though the broth has come from meat. I just wanted to do something different. And I used the black soybean. So anything, and it was a base, and it was delicious. I would even sprinkle some of my... Um, uh, um, nutritional yeast on top, which gave it a cheesy flavor, and it was good to go. So there's no, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you can use, use it for making gravy. 
You can add it for that. You can cook your quinoa in it. You can cook your rice with it. Um, or you can just drink it. You can just heat up a nice cup of bone broth and drink it. So it's so important for your immune system. It's a staple to have in your house over the winter. And all it takes is really collecting. So maybe after Christmas dinner, you have all the turkey bones. Just take the carcass, take the whole carcass and the bones, put it in a pot, fill it with water, put in the apple cider vinegar, and just let it come to a boil and then simmer it. And it does its own. It just cooks, and you're drawing all the nutrients from the uh, bones. But the apple cider vinegar is the real key, and that's why I wanted to share it today because that's the ingredient that helps to draw the minerals out. You do get some without it, but you definitely maximize the nutrients if you use the apple cider vinegar. Okay. Any questions? Q&A time. Uh, G. Hewn has said she's going to definitely try out the, the bone broth. Uh, Great. And uh, I have suggested that once you have tried it out, you can definitely take a picture of what it looks like and then email it to public.art at oakville.ca. We'd be happy to share that in our social media posts, some wonderful bone broth that we can share with the wonderful residents of Oakville. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's such an easy thing to do. And you can buy bone broths in the store. The only problem with it is there's usually a lot of high sodium content because it's, they're packaged it and it has to sit on a shelf for a long time. And, you know, that can be a concern for us, um, high sodium. So making your own, and you can add your own sea salt seasoning or your kosher salt after, and you're getting the healthy salt in the right amount. So definitely um, making your own. It just takes, uh, like anything else, if you think ahead of time and you have the pot out and you're ready to go, um, it's really not a hard thing to do. It's just remembering to do it. And... Um, always have and then what we do after once it's all cooled we take it uh, we do cup servings or sometimes two cup servings and we do a bpa free plastic bag and we put it in the plastic bag remember it has to be chilled you don't want to put hot hot broth in and then we uh, label it and we put it in our freezer so when we want to make a soup or we want to make a sauce or a gravy we take out the bone broth it melts in like you know a couple minutes and you're ready to go and we have it on hand we're stocked up if somebody's sick first thing we pull out is the bone broth and we just start drinking that and adding it making those soups it's such a powerhouse and especially with the garlic that we learned about today wow we've re we're really set for uh whatever the season brings our way so i wanted to uh this is our last session of the day and i wanted to leave you with a song because um, as some of you may know, I'm a musician, singer, guitarist, pianist, and this is a wonderful song that I learned years ago from the Irish Rovers, and I don't know if they're around anymore or not, but um, it's a wonderful Christmas song, and I wanted to leave you with this Christmas wish. So I'm gonna switch gears and share that with you now. Just gonna check if you can hear my guitar okay. Maybe Nabil, you can tell me. Um, I don't know if you believe in Christmas Or if you have presents underneath the Christmas tree But if you Yeah.
Merry Christmas. Have a blessed, happy, prosperous, healthy New Year. Thank you. What a way, what a way to to end that, Diane. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, and and we have some wonderful comments I would just like to share with you. Um, Daniel is just uh, saying he just got caught you at the right time because he was able to catch the song. That was uh, awesome. Thank yes, you. it was awesome. Uh, Jay Hoon is obviously very uh, grateful for you as well. I saw Gary did a little hand and then Daniel and, and Linda, obviously. So thank you. Um, if there's no more questions uh, at all, uh, and Daniel, I don't know if you came here to share something or give, share us your wisdom and your I, knowledge with us. I, I came to talk to Diane at the tail end. So I'll let the program in and then Diane, if you have a moment, I'll chat with you. I do. Thank you. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions, any comments, anything to add? Linda? Just Merry Christmas to everybody. Awesome. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you. Anybody else? Any questions? Any thoughts? Any insights? I think we should have a bone broth challenge. I, I kind of like that idea. <laughs> we should we should do it. Um, uh, perfect. Well, if there's no more questions, guys, I just, oh, there's some more comments. Let's just uh, see here what we have. Oh, yes. I think said yes. Bone broth a challenge yes get out the big pots and get ready to collect your turkey bones yeah Perfect. Diane, could you could you email that full recipe for the bone broth to me certainly will that's great thanks we'll do okay great perfect so you know what why don't we make a bone broth based on your turkey whatever it is that's left over uh and you know i would highly recommend you guys email us your pictures of your bone broth to public dot mm -hmm. at oakville.ca mm -hmm. and we'll share it on our facebook um, and our and our social media pages because I think it's interesting because it's all about being healthy but it's also about utilizing every part of the animal that you're you know you're eating with and uh, and also it keeps you warm and healthy during the winter time so mm -hmm. uh, it'd be a fun little activity so please feel free to do it I'll, I think I'll definitely participate and 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 share what I come up with and and uh, and so on so thank you guys if there's no more questions it was a fantastic program Diane thank you so thank much you. for all the the wonderful knowledge that you shared. And, uh, and we hope to see you again and everybody else stay safe and uh, we'll see you if you're on today, guys, at 2.30, uh, we have George, Travel with George. So hopefully you guys are able to check us out there. Uh, maybe we'll find different variations of bone broth across the world that uh, George can share with us. Um, so we look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you so much, guys. Take Thank care. You. Okay, bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Nabil, is it just us now? It is just, hold on one second. Let me just stop recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>